previous video we have seen up to resistors in series combination so as we know if you connect resistors in series combination so suppose three resistance are resistors are connected r1 r2 and r3 and in order to find the equivalent resistance in total or equivalent resistance in series combination then we have to take the sum of all three individual resistances and definitely the equivalent resistance or total resistances are always greater than the individual resistance up to this point we have seen in previous video next now if you connect resistors in parallel so here similarly r1 r2 r3 all three resistors are connected parallel parallel means all left terminal of all the resistors are connected at one point and right terminals of the all the resistors are connected at one point so here one more interesting fact is that as the resistance or resistors are connected in parallel so current flowing through each of the resistance will be different as they are following different path so here i1 is the current flowing through the r1 i2 is the current flowing through the r2 i3 will be the current flowing through the r3 so as they are connected in parallel here r1 r2 r3 as they are connected in parallel so the potential difference across each of the resistance will be same so previous slide we have seen that as they are connected in series so the as they are connected in series so they follow same path same path means the current will be same in each and every resistance but potential difference is different but here as they are connected in different paths so current will be different but potential difference is same so most in interesting fact is that if you connect resistances in series so the current is different and potential difference is same but here in parallel current is different and potential difference is same so my dear student here when three resistors r1 r2 r3 are connected in parallel across point a and b okay in between battery key and emitter in order to measure the current so the total current in the all resistors in the sum of current in the each resistor as i said every path follows different current so i1 i2 i3 is are the all three different currents will be getting in the parallel combination so i is a total current so by using the formula of resistance in parallel combination we can find the total or equivalent resistance in parallel combination that is here rp is total or equivalent resistance in parallel combination so reciprocal of equivalent resistance in parallel combination is equal to sum of reciprocal of all individual resistances so here we can say the total resistance is always always less than the individual resistance suppose if you find rp so rp will be always less than r1 r2 and r3 this is one more important fact so this is all about the resistance in parallel so next point will move towards the electrical energy so my dear student electrical energy is nothing but work done required for flow of current in the conductor means what amount of work done is required to flow the charges from higher potential to lower potential so as we know the work definition of the work done we have seen in previous slides work done is equal to potential difference into charge but as per the definition of electric current we know that this electric current is equal to charge per unit time so we can find the value of charge from the definition of electric current so charge is nothing but product of current into time use this equation in this work done formula so work done is equal to v as it is but value of q is nothing but it where again we know that according to ohm's law v is equal to ir so if you put the value of v in this equation so it will come ir into it so the final equation becomes work done is equal to i square rt so this is the expression for electrical energy because work done will save or will store in the form of energy only so here si unit of electrical energy is joule so my dear student this is all about the electrical energy once again electrical energy is the work done required for the flow of current in conductor so work done is equal to charge into potential but we know that according to definition of electric current charge is nothing but current into time so if you put the value of this charge in work done formula it will come vit but according to ohm's law we know the value of ohm's law also 
it is nothing but current into resistance so if you put all the values in work done formula it will come i square rt next electrical power so we know that power is nothing but work done per unit time it is the rate at which electric current is consumed or used so as per our definition power is equal to work done upon time but previous slide only we have done the definition of work done definition of work done is nothing but potential difference into charge so use this value in this work done formula so it will come potential difference into charge per unit this time is as it is but according to the definition of electric current we know that charge per unit time is electric current so here if you put charge per unit time is electric current then power automatically will come current into voltage or potential difference into current so this is the formula of power so power is nothing but one more definition we got in electric current the definition of power is it is the product of current into voltage or potential difference into current so the si unit of power is watt an object has one watt of power when one ampere of current flows across the conductor with potential difference of one volt this is the definition of one watt because SI unit of power is watt. So if potential difference is one and if current is also one, then we can say power is power consumed is also one watt. So this is all about the electric power, my dear students. So here most important thing we got the two different definition of electric power. First, electric power is the rate at which the electrical energy consumed. And second thing, as per the mathematical formula, power is nothing but product of potential difference into current. And the SI unit of power is watt. Next commercial unit of energy my dear students we are using kilowatt hour as a commercial unit of energy got it so one kilowatt hour is the power consumed when one watt of power is used for one hour so here one kilowatt hour is nothing but one unit in our home day to day life we are using the electricity so the electricity bill used to come after one month in units like 4 units 50 units 200 units that one unit is nothing but one kilowatt hour okay after this we are going to see the numericals so in that it will be very clear for you so the relationship between the kilowatt hour and the joule so the most important relation is one kilowatt hour is equal to one kilowatt into one hour okay but one kilowatt is nothing but 1000 watt and one hour contain 3600 seconds so one kilowatt hour is equal to if you multiply these two terms we'll get three six zero 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 joule that is one kilowatt hour is nothing but three point six into ten to six joules next the heating effect of electric current so my dear student there is a simple definition of heating effect of electric current just note down it is not there in the ppd heating effect of electric current it is the heat produced due to some amount of current flows through the conductor getting my point means if you pass small amount of current through the any of the conductor it generates heat in it isn't it so this effect is called as heating effect for example iron okay uh, then dryers then uh, electric geysers we are using this heating effect of electric current only so my dear student just concentrate on this circuit diagram so here one resistance resistor we have connected across voltmeter then two terminals a and b then uh, battery key and ammeter in order to measure the current so if a current i is flows through the resistor of resistance r for time t okay then q amount of charges will flow from point a to b okay and for that purpose w amount of work done is required to flow the charges q from point a to b and v will be the potential difference across point b and a okay so according to the definition of work done we can write potential difference into charge okay but we know that charge according to definition of electric current charge is nothing but current into time so here we can put the value of q i t and v is as it is so the whatever whatever work done is there it is going to store in the form of heat only so heat energy is equal to we can write this i t is nothing but i t into v so here we can write i into v into t okay so this is the formula of heat energy but according to ohm's law again we know that this v is nothing but ir so 
we can write heat energy is equal to i r into i t so the formula becomes h is equal to i square r t so this is the formula of heating effect of electric current so my dear student here the important fact is that how do we convert electrical energy into heat so for that purpose you have to understand only this thing during the flow of current through the resistance or conductor the kinetic energy of fast moving electrons or moving electrons when they collides with the positively charged particle this kinetic energy gets converted into thermal energy and this thermal energy is nothing but the heat so in this way we can extract the heat from electrical energy and the basic formula of uh, heating effect of electric current is h is equal to i square rt so basically amount of heat produced okay amount of heat produced in the conductor of resistance r is directly proportional to the square of the current second directly proportional to the resistance and third directly proportional to the time so this my dear student we have to remember this formula for the numerical purpose now next and last point of this topic electric fuse my dear student electric fuse it works on the heating effect of electric current heating effect of electric current previous slide only i have explained heating effect of electric current is nothing but when you pass some amount of current through the any of the resistor or any of the conducting wire it generates some heat in that wire this is called as heating effect and it this effect or this heating effect of electric current we can use as application in electric fuse so an electric fuse is a safety device used to limit the current in the electric circuit so many a times uh, if short circuit happens in the home or day to day circuits home appliances so the value of the current is increases rapidly so what will happen due to high current the heat will generate and due to heat that whatever wire is there it will melt and it will seize off or shut down the flow of current in the home so the fuse is a short piece of wire made up of material of high resistivity and low melting point high resistivity because it will generate more heat and low melting point means small amount of current is sufficient to melt the wire so this is the main importance of electric fuse so here my dear student what about the electric fuse electric fuse it works on the principle of heating effect of electric current second thing it is safety device which is used to limit the current in an electric circuit and third is very important thing electric fuse in matlab which uh, wire we are using or we are supposed to use in the electric fuse that wire should have high resistance and low melting point so this this is all about the electric fuse my dear students so next these are the homework you have to do just uh, take a screenshot of this so that you can copy it okay and all the questions you have to solve and remember ki these are the only theory questions and after this you are going to start the numericals also okay so my dear student this is all about today's lecture we'll once again revise what we have done today so first thing we have done resistances in parallel so here we learn if you connect resistors in parallel then current across each of the resistance is different and potential difference across all is same and if you want to find the total resistance or equivalent resistance in parallel combination of resistances then we have to take the reciprocal of sum of all individual resistances next we have seen the electrical energy so electrical energy it is the product of yes it is a product of power into time my dear student here we got the new definition electrical energy is product of power into time because here we can say here if you see work done is equal to vit vi is power and t is time so one more definition we write electrical energy is nothing but it is a product of power into time and the si entropy of electrical energy is joule so this definition you must write in the uh, notebook then electrical power electrical power is nothing but it is the product of current into voltage si entropy of electric power is watt then commercial unit of electric power is kilowatt hour and kilowatt hour is nothing but our day to day matlab whatever uh, electricity readings we are taking that one unit is nothing but 1 kilowatt hour and 1 kilowatt hour is nothing but 3.6 into 10 raised to 6 joules many times this question may come uh, in the mcqs during the board examination and then heating effect of electric current very simple heating effect of electric current is nothing but uh when you pass small amount of current through the any of the conductor it generates heat in it it is called as heating effect and the simple formula is h is equal to i square 
RT. And next electric fuse, it works on the heating effect of electric current. It is the same.